No Jumper, coolest podcast in the world. And today we got up and coming talent. FCG Heem is on the podcast. For sure. How you doing, man? I'm good, man. Happy to be here for real. Yeah, you enjoy yourself when you're in LA? Yeah, you know, smoke a lot. Yeah. <laughs> you're a pothead, huh? Uh, mm, <laughs> a little piece. <laughs> I was watching some of your other interviews. It just seemed like the, the, the weed never left your hands. <laughs> Damn, I just discovered, just discovered a seed in mine. Yeah. One seed? Throw the whole thing out. Yeah, yeah. That shit. Got to get the seed out. Yeah. Do you feel like the the weed is, like, of a different quality when you're uh, out here in L.A.? Like, you feel um, like it's a little bit easier to get, like, really good weed? Yeah, yeah kind of. But at the, it just be, it's more, like, free. Like, you mm. feel me? You could down smoke in front of the police. Like, uh, yeah. That shit different, like. Like, even the other day, we were smoking, like, and the police drove by and waved at us, like, yeah. feel me? Definitely. We ain't getting none of that back where I'm from. Yeah, Florida, I feel like probably, like, one of the worst yeah. states for how they, they treat small crimes. Yeah, and they ain't playing about no weed, for real. Right, definitely. Yeah, I mean, I've seen that change over the years where it slowly became, like, you know, we would be on in front of our old store, mm -hmm. and there'd be cops walking by. And there would be 15 fucking dudes sitting there all smoking blunts. And the cops just got to walk through the weed cloud. And it's like, I know this shit basically legal now, but I'm also yeah. kind of looking at y'all like, doesn't this make you mad that you can't do anything what? about this anymore? I wonder how they feel. How you think they feel about that? You think they'd be mad? You know, because they used to have so many more criminals to arrest. Yeah. Yeah, I was reading like an old rap magazine, and it was just like I'm looking at the news of like you know what everybody's getting picked up for. Yeah, every every person who gets arrested is for weed. Weed, or like oh they they caught him with a gun and weed. You know yeah. everything has always got weed. Yeah, yeah, for real. Okay, so tell us a little bit about where exactly you grew up in in Broward and, and what all that was like as a young man. So I'm from a uh, part of t part of Broward called like shallow side, Lauder Hill type shit. Okay, so uh, you know. Over there, it's just, you know, pretty regular. You got, feel me, the bad dudes. You got the good dudes, you feel me? Right. <laughs> you got niggas who, feel me, go out, get it, you feel me? You know, same shit like any neighborhood, man, you know? Right. Hell yeah, you got the good and the bad. You just got to pretty much choose which one you want to do for real. And like, feel me? Cause it ain't really too much good over there, you feel me? So, but was all the street shit and everything like right in front of your face from For a sure. very young age? For sure. You were always seeing I don't even think like that shit be like regular to me though. Like I don't even, you feel me? I don't even know how to say this. Like what niggas be like, you know how some people like portray something as like street, like that shit would be regular mm. for us. Like, you feel me? Just like if you get what I mean. <laughs> seeing crazy shit. All right. So wait, yeah. like you talk about being real young. Was like, do you remember the first time that you saw some shit going down in terms of like, I don't know, shootings or, or crazy ass fights and shit mm -hmm. like that? Was that just like something kind of normal to you as a young? Yeah, age? fights in the neighborhood and shit like that was was normal. Mm. Shootings, that shit probably happened like once in a while back then. Right. Like nowadays, it's more like shootings and shit. Yeah. Feel me? Yeah, hell yeah. It's gotten a lot worse. It got worse with shootings and shit. Yeah. Right. Cause niggas ain't fighting no more. Really? Yeah. See back then it was just fighting. Like if it was a problem, nigga fight. But it's probably cause we was younger too at the same time. Right. We ain't really see it like this here. Mm. You know? Yeah, because the older like, you get a different like young young people are a lot less likely to shoot each other. Older people that definitely yeah. start shooting each other. But I mean, I, I always think of uh, the Rio, the Young OG song where he said they started shooting people's houses and took the fun out of it. Okay. Like, you know, maybe it was fun to beef and shit, but yeah. then once beefing becomes, oh, I'm going to just drive by your house at night and nah, shoot and maybe kill your mom. Like, I mean, that that's some crazy ass shit. Like that really kind of like, like <laughs> the, the change from fighting to shooting is one thing. Yeah. The change from shooting somebody to shooting up their house is a totally different change. And some different timing. Hundred mm, percent. So, what kind of mm. kid were you in uh, in school? Yeah, I was. I probably was like the kid who tried to, <laughs> who was just trying to be cool in class. You feel me? Mm. Yeah, I wasn't really. I wouldn't say I was bad though. You know, but I just went and never focused in school for real. Mm. I don't know why. Right. 
I just could never focus in school. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. I feel that. Dude. It's not that I went smart, like, you feel me? But it just, I don't know. It just was never for me, to me. Mm. What, how, what grade did you make it to? I graduated high school. Oh, okay. Was that tough? Yeah. Mm, it wasn't tough, but I had got, like, kicked out of my, like, you feel me? My, my regular school, Kyle going to, uh, like, a public high school, and then I got switched to, like, an alternative. Uh-huh. So bad. Why yeah, they yeah. switch you to alternative? Just my grade and shit. All right. You know? Were you yeah. a real big fan of uh, rap music throughout high school and shit? Was that something that was already taking a ton of your attention? Yeah, I think I've been in love with music from, like, smaller than that, like, uh-huh. younger than that, like, elementary, probably. Right. Yeah, yeah. What kind of, uh, like, what stuff were you the most drawn to? Like, uh, like that hip-hop, like, pretty much the type of shit I rap now, like, uh-huh. Like just positive music type shit, like the na- talking to the neighborhood type shit. Uh huh. Like niggas like, like I don't be wanting to say <laughs> R. Kelly, but like <laughs> R. Kelly was a big inspiration. R. Kelly was like he was major. I ain't gonna lie. But you don't make fucking gospel music. R. Kelly had like songs like I Wish. Mm. That shit was gas right there. Get a lot of R and B shit. Yeah. You know now they like. Like somebody was telling me they were at Disney World or some shit, yeah. and they were playing like all R. Kelly covers. Like they <laughs> got little crazy. girls singing R. Kelly and shit because they don't want to have R. Kelly's voice blasting through the Disneyland at this point. Yeah, that's crazy. What? <laughs> For real? You uh, saying they ain't even playing his shit? I mean, they just don't want his voice in there, but they can't ignore the fact so that it's like, like kids' bop. You, you know, he made some of the most iconic fucking songs ever. Actually, yo, real talk, I had somebody in here, I can't even remember who, but the other day who had a song with R. Kelly and I wanted to ask him about it. Yeah. Then I pussied out and I didn't do it. <laughs> well, you asked him, bro. Just didn't want to make it uncomfortable and be like, so you did a song with this rapist. Let's uh, talk you, about you it. Gotta, Why'd you, you do that? You, <laughs> you got to bring it out a certain way. You can't just come at him like that. And I remember I interviewed somebody back a couple of years who yeah. uh, who had a song with R. Kelly, and I, I asked him about it, and I said, so you did a song with R. Kelly. Like, How come you uh, made that decision? And he was just like, yeah, you know, like, I fuck with R. Kelly, so I did a song with R. Kelly, and then he just stared at me. And I was just like, all right. All right they ain't trying to say nothing that's going get to them, get them banned. I guess not. <laughs> but were you, so you were, like, real drawn to, like, sort of street hip-hop as yeah, well? Yeah. Like, I feel like, okay, let's just throw it out there. I feel like Kodak's, that'd be, like, a yeah, massive that's inspiration sure. for the whole generation. For the whole Florida. South Florida, yeah. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. If you rapping, you down there. Looked up to Kodak at one point. Yeah, for sure. Florida. Young yeah. nigga coming up. Mm. He showed like for the sure. blueprint of like how you can make it without really like a cosign and shit too, you know? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Was there anybody else in particular who was really uh, stood out to you that you wanted to sort of do a similar thing to what they were um, doing? I ain't gonna lie. I got like a lot of people who I kind of like, I'll say like kind of molded like, what I am right now, like with the music, you feel me? Uh-huh. Like, you got niggas like 50 Cent, like, oh, really? you feel me? Hell yeah, like, I had a West CD, like, you feel me? I just listen, I like listening to a lot of different music, like, try to open my mind up for real. Mm. Like, even like Tupac, I go listen to, like, you feel me? See what was like, like, what people like so much, you feel me? Even though I know he's like, he dope. You mm-hmm. feel me? But I be trying to, you get what I'm saying? But if you only listen to music from like your generation, your time period, yeah. music that just came out within the last year or two, you're always going to be thinking within a certain box, you know? Like yeah. I grew up on Tupac, so for me it's it's obvious, but I feel like a lot of times when I go back and listen to the shit from the 70s, 80s, whatever, mm-hmm. you can really kind of think about music in a more open-ended way. Yeah. I feel like once you really know about your music for real, like it's going to be easier for you for real. And, like, you know how to down there approach every song, for real. Like, you feel mm. me? When it, like, with the lyrics and everything, like, you feel me? Mm. That shit help you, for real. So you were making music during high school? Um, I wasn't making no music. But, like, since elementary, like, in elementary, I was doing, like, talent shows and shit. But I just never really took it serious till like, I was, like, 19. That's when I, like, recorded my first song. Who put you in the studio or who who helped you even get um, into that position? Shit. Like, I wasn't even really, when I first started, I wasn't even really going to the studio like that. But 
when I got with like my team I'm with now, like they really put me in the studio for real, like locked me in type shit. Like I was in there like grinding for real. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so how did you start to get any kind of attention that would make the team so, reach out to you? So, um, pretty much like I was working at Walmart and like I had a song that was like catching buzz like throughout the city. Which one was that? Uh, Dead Weight. It was okay. called Dead Weight. I think I heard that one. Yeah, it was like a real like pain song type shit. But mm. the whole city like was starting to like gravitate to it. Like that shit had like a couple hundred thousand plays like with no video. Mm. I mean, people don't even know who really sings the song. Like, feel me? So when I got behind the team I'm with now, New Era, you know, they really just helped me do everything. Like, you feel me? Mm. Help show the world like who made this song type shit. You feel me? Right. Yeah, yeah. So were you like, did you feel like you didn't really know what direction to go in in order to become more of like a real artist or to start to really get your name out there? And they sort of yeah, for sure. Yeah, because you're like, like from the trenches, like not really knowing what it is yeah. to become a a real rapper and to start building this mm -hmm. brand, right? Don't even really know where to start. Like you feel me? You know you need like videos. You know. I ain't really have money to shoot the videos or nothing, like, you feel me? So I really needed help back then, for real. Mm. Uh, yeah, yeah. because we got introduced through uh, Track. Mm -hmm. Track is the one who, who fucking set us up. Yeah. Um, Shout out to Track, for sure. How did he get in touch with you? Like, what, what was this um, like? Like, it's pretty much the same thing. Like, Track was like, see, when, once my music started picking up, like, Track was one of the ones who really, like, picked up on it early, too. Like, you know, but... He just didn't really like see it all the way, mm. but I just had to like feel me, keep grinding and showing like I'm serious about it. You feel me? Right. But he picked up on it like just how the whole city picked up on it like just buzzing it like I don't know how it even got like that. Like he's got a good ear. He yeah, knows, he got a good ear. And he got like a shitload of artists under him. They're yeah. all pretty good right now too. Yeah, so for sure. So New Era is like is a different label that you signed to initially, or, mm -hmm. or what was that exactly? That was like the uh, that's like a local label, like back one from, but they like really like big, like in Broward. You mm -hmm. feel me? So I got with them boys, and like they like they got their own label type shit. You feel me? Right. So I got with them boys, and you know we got together, teamed up. You know, track got on board with us, and we. Feel me? Right. Took it, took it here. It's been building up ever since. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, what do you feel like the biggest, like, changes have been in your music in terms of, like, what you've learned about what people relate to when it comes to music or what, what, what shit people like or what kind of music you like? Yeah, yeah. see, probably uh, just knowing that, like, everybody, like, has, like, a story type shit. So, you know, you got to really talk about your life because you never know, like, people really go through similar things as you, you feel me? Mm. So at first, I was like, with this music, I was like, scared to really like, how I'ma really go at it, cause I don't really know like, what people gonna think about mm. what I'm saying. But now it's like, I know people can relate to what I'm saying now. So, you know, make it easier for me to just tell like, about like, what I seen, what I have been through, mm. feel me? Yeah, uh, yeah. You talk about a lot of crazy street shit in your music. Yeah. You've been through a lot of I done situations. Through, I done been through a lot of stuff. <laughs> Not necessarily like street, but I done been through I done been through some shit and I done seen a lot of stuff. Right. Yeah. Um is it ever like a worry that you're putting too much detail in the music? Um you don't want to say yourself. Like, Oh, no, nah, we ain't gonna do no. We well, not, do you know, maybe not 100% sit yeah. on yourself, but you don't even want to give any kind of information, right? Yeah, I be feeling like I be wanting, I be needing to give a little more. Mm. Yeah, like I be feeling like you gotta really open up and let them really into your world for real. Mm. Yeah. The extreme version of that is when you see people blowing up off of just straight talking about, like, well, really, all you gotta do is look at Jacksonville. Yeah. They, oh, yeah. You know, people don't even know who the fuck. They're talking about half the time, but they know that it's real. They know that there's a gang war. It's mm -hmm. all in the music. Million white kids who want to fucking pay attention to every last word of it. Yeah, that's that. Uh, that's different though. Like, feel me? I don't really talk about like too much violence and then like that. You mm -hmm. know? Or not like specific violence? Yeah, not specific <laughs> violence. Yeah. Yeah. You know? 
I just, like, that's what I say. Like, I'm really a product of my environment, you feel me? Mm. Like, I couldn't, I don't feel like it'd be real if I ain't at violence. You get what I'm saying? Because there's violence going on. Right. So you got to really still be in tune, you feel me? Like, get what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. When you look at that Jacksonville shit, though, does that just seem crazy as fuck to you? It's like, it's it's far enough away in Florida that it's yeah. kind of foreign, almost? Um... Shit, I don't really, like, I try not to really, like, pay too much attention to it, but it's, to me, it seems like it's working for them, like, yeah. you know, Jacksonville doing their thing right now. The craziest thing for me was when I realized that both of the main rappers involved don't live in Jacksonville. Yeah. And one lives in Texas, and I think one lives in Atlanta, so they just, like, there's all this crazy shit, it all relates back to that city, but then in reality... They're not really there, which makes sense because, like, imagine what the fucking cops would be like to yeah. them there. Yeah. They're never going to fucking leave them alone, you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they not. Crackers going to definitely be on you for sure. Um, so you you ever had any problems with the law or you managed to avoid all that? A um, little minor bump ins, but, you know, nothing too serious. I try my best to, like, stay out the way of, you know? Mm. Yeah. Definitely. But you definitely, do you feel like you really have like your city or your neighborhood behind you? Because I've seen a lot of videos that you got like fucking pretty packed crowds yeah, I, in there and everything. I feel like they behind me, you know. But you know, when you get a little more, you know, the bigger you get, the more like mm. everybody come on board. You feel me? But you're conscious of that? The fact that like there's a lot of people who probably didn't give a fuck about you a year ago but who are all of a sudden they want to be your best yeah. friend? Yeah, you got to know like certain shit going to come with it. Mm. Certain shit gonna come with this, but you know, I know like who really behind me, you feel me? Right. So that's all that really, that's good with me. Definitely. But I know my like, my neighborhood, like where I'm from, like they definitely 100% behind me though. Right. For sure. Down yeah. to the city, for real, the city really behind me, for real. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, cause you, you came up in here with like 10 dudes. Who, 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 who'd you come in here with? Uh, I got, I got 808 Nate. You know, he a uh, producer. Okay. Uh, now I won't just say a producer, but like producer, engineer, like everything with this music shit for okay. real. Like he could do it. So these are more parts of your overall team, and not yeah. necessarily just your street connections. Nah, there's okay. no street connection. <laughs> <laughs> I got yeah, but you know, 808 Nate, he produced beats for like Melly. Oh shit, okay. Uh, and engineer for Melly and uh, Kodak and all them boys. Oh yeah. No, like yeah. beats like what like that. Oh no. shit, for real. Yeah. So yeah. You know, and then that's her right there, her mom point cameraman, uh -huh. you know, director, you know, he shoot like majority of my visuals and shit. He shoot a lot of other big artists too, you know. Oh yeah. Yeah yeah. And then I got uh, Michael Ryan, A and R from Republic. Oh okay. I was yeah, trying to figure yeah. out how a white guy slipped in here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah. That's the man. Yeah, right A and R now. from the label. Oh okay. Yeah yeah. yeah. <laughs> Got and then I got like my, my my managers my managers right there you know them the CEOs and CFOs of the new era the label right okay so that's what yeah. you tapped in with like early yeah. on all right mm -hmm. for sure yeah do you feel like sure. you are you getting a lot of like I don't know I feel like you can't blow up out of Florida as a rapper without also attracting a lot of like you know negative attention yeah. too where there's people who want to hate on you there's people who want to fucking all of a sudden you're their op or whatever. I feel like that's probably because of what's going on right now. What, them knowing that it's fucking popular to have yeah. ops now? I don't know. I'm just saying, like, I feel like it's, like, you probably saying that because, like, of what's going on right now. You feel me? Yeah. Like, it's not really, like, it's a lot of, like, you know, problems and shit going on. But I feel like you could, like, you could do it without doing all that, though. Yeah, so you try to avoid yeah. the sort of beefing yeah, yeah. and all that? I try to. Yeah. Because that shit ain't really like, feel me? Yeah. I mean, it's like short term viral for yeah. a small percentage of and people. And you're going to get like, I don't need, feel me? Yeah. You get real people behind that, you know what I'm saying? Mm. So I like to just stay out the way, you know? Yeah. I'd rather my people be safe, you feel me? Yeah. Keep them out of anything. I mean, that is the crazy thing, not even to, like, speak crazy about his situation and everything, but mm -hmm. I was watching a video the other day about Dirk kind of just pointing out that, like, 
bro, Dirk got a lot of enemies and yeah. the people getting, you know, it's not always him yeah. that's having to deal with it. It's like other people in his life, relatives yeah. of his who end up being in these crazy situations. And yeah. yeah, I mean, when you, when you, you might be like ready for whatever in terms of violence and shit, but you don't necessarily want to put everybody in your life into yeah. that fucking position. But then again, sometimes shit do come to you too, though. Like, you feel me? Mm -hmm. Sometimes you can't, like, sometimes you're going to have to like, but you got to just know that, like, mm. when it's real, we going to treat it like that. You feel me? Right. But we ain't going to just, feel me, try to create something, you know? Like, just to have something to talk yeah, about. Yeah. <laughs> feel me? That's real. Yeah, yo. How'd you uh, tap in with Tusi? I know you got a lot of features uh, yeah, you've been we did doing. A, we had did a song with him, but, like, he just fucked with us, like, heavy mm. ever since then. You feel me? Even like when we dropped it, like, feel me, you know how most people like, you know, when you, like, he actually asked us to send a video so he could post it on his page and everything. Like, he a real one for sure. That's what's up. How I'm also you... going on tour with him too. Oh, for real? Yeah. How'd you guys even get in communication in the first place? Like, where'd that come from? Uh, I think we met with Trap. Oh, uh, okay. Like, Trap set up the feature with us. And, you know, it's just been like that ever since. Right. Yeah, yeah. You never knew Melly before he got locked up and shit? Mm, nah. You're a little too young but for like, that? Them, like, my team and shit, they they know I'm, like, good. Oh, okay. Feel me? Mm -hmm. That's what's up. Like, Nate. Nate produced for him a lot and, like, really recorded, like, a lot of his songs for real. Right. Yeah. You think he's coming out? It was out? actually, he was with y'all that day. <laughs> Where? <laughs> like, I just, <laughs> I'm tripping. But he like the incident what happened with them boys. Like the last spot they was at was with like at our studio. Type Before shit. he got arrested. Yeah. Wow. Really. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Damn, that's crazy. It was at our studio. So shit. You gonna try to work with them when Melly gets out? Of course, we got to work. That's mandatory. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Fingers crossed. Hundred K. Got to get got him out. That's easy. Now it's hundred K family. All right. Yeah. So how you feel about that? You got a good relationship with like a lot of people on the label? Yeah, for sure. Okay. Yeah. And it's like real too. It's not like forced. Like we just genuinely feel me. Kick mm -hmm. it with each other sometimes and shit. That's Even what Vine. We played basketball with Vine and shit before he passed away. Yeah. What was that like when you met him? That shit was major. Wow. He was a really like cool dude for real. Yeah. That is crazy because right at the beginning of the pandemic, I think it was, we interviewed Vaughn and it was dope, but I definitely didn't realize in that moment, like yeah. how big he was going to get and how legendary that interview yeah. was going to be and how many people are going to go back to that to try to remember him and shit like that. Yeah. You know? That's crazy. Yeah. The hundred, the hundred K thing is pretty fucking dope. Just like, I feel like that's what Florida needs is it needs more, you know, more like opportunities for a young kid who's an artist out of there to see like dope shit going on and, yeah. and for them to be able to gravitate towards that without thinking like oh I gotta go to LA or Atlanta to make yeah. something out of myself you know yeah that why you feel me like we got to really grind so people who coming up after us they don't gotta you feel me it could be more easier mm -hmm. you know yeah uh, yeah that's how I want my city like Broward County I want that shit major mm -hmm. like Atlanta definitely Cause it's really like it's a lot of talent down there. It's just about getting it heard for real. Mm. Uh, yeah. How are you adjusting to being uh, more well known? Like, do you uh, is, it, is it weird? Like, you go to Walmart and people want to take photos with you and shit. Yeah, it's weird sometimes, but I just try to like. I just know, like, you feel me? I wouldn't be here like without the fans. So I just always try to be like, feel me? Like. If they take on to take a picture, you know, I just always try to make sure I get it done with them. You feel me? Mm, definitely. Yeah. I just but always... sometimes it could get like, you know, because sometimes you're not always in like that. Yeah. That mood. Especially when it's like 5,000 in a row. Yeah. That's when it gets rough. When you're oh, at yeah. like a show or something and you're actually around when like a When it's a, a show, you got to just, you got to just move. You can't even really stop and take no pictures for real. Mm. How'd you uh, get that song going with uh, Pooh Shiesty? Um, another feature. Okay. You know, 100K, same thing, Trap. What was that like being around him? Um, shit, it was, uh, it was an experience. Uh -huh. uh, yeah. He looked like he, he was dope. a little slumped in that video. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> 
<laughs> oh no! Respect to Pooh Shiesty, yeah. but he, he definitely looked like. Treat that boy for real. There's been a lot of Pooh Shiesty videos and footage that I've seen where I was like, "Oh yeah, that's yeah. a fucking lean day right there for sure." <laughs> you get fucked up, you do drugs. Nah, I don't nah. do I don't do lean and none of that. I just smoke. Just smoke. Yeah. You don't drink. Nothing else. No Hennessy. I might do. A, I don't even really like like drinking like that. I might drink some champagne like Bel Air. Right. More wet shit like that. Yeah. Yeah. And I ain't really like when you put it like that. That shit be on no. It's great. I'll drink it sometimes, but I'd rather drink like my prefer is champagne and shit like that. You feel me? Right, definitely. Yeah, yeah. You never tried drugs, you never popped a Molly or anything when you were nah, younger? I ain't never popped a Molly. <laughs> Class, none of that. <laughs> That's probably a good thing. Yeah. Like if you're gonna do drugs, just give it a shot and get it out of your system, but it's probably better to avoid it altogether. Yeah, I really just like started smoking heavy for real too. Like, really? you feel me? yeah, yeah. You uh, you feel like it's changed your life a little bit or no? Mm, I feel like you, you got to change. Like, I'm getting older, mm. so a lot of shit really gonna change. You feel me? Right. Yeah, yeah. I think it's good because it makes not too much change though. I don't feel like it's like as long as it ain't changing to where like. Feel me? I'm really fucking up type shit. Like, yeah. you feel me? Yeah. I feel like it's good because it helps, like, make me a little less uh, aggressive. Yeah. A little bit it less, just like, calm you down intense. a little piece. Yeah. Yeah. So I feel like that, too. A lot of times I can't stop thinking about, like, business ideas until fucking two in the morning. Yeah. Like, I'm still laying in bed and my brain's still going crazy thinking about new ideas you gotta hit and that shit. Dope. Yeah, that's what you that need that dope for. That cool you down. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, we got to get you on these edibles. What edibles you got? These right here. 2020 future sour rings oh, bro i'm telling shit. you take one of them what it's gonna do for you i mean you're just gonna get higher you're gonna keep smoking weed on top of it but then I you're gonna have the really good body high going at the same time lie. you really got to explain this one to me i'm seeing a thousand mgtac yeah, yeah, but it's, it's like 10 rings 100 milligrams each i would say so there's like some zaza that's some zaza it was I've I've had people in my life that I know who smoke weed consistently, yeah. and they ate one, and they were fucking out of it like bad. Like I like I don't know. I, I would just say move slow because I'm taking like four I or probably, five a night now. What these? Yeah. Oh hell no. But I think I need to chill. I didn't take any yeah, last you night for the chill. first time in a couple of weeks. You got to chill, fam. Yeah, because you don't anything like, that say a thousand on it. You don't want to take too much of them. Yeah, you, you don't want to like Got totally it. get used to being that high all the time. I might take a quarter a piece of one of them. No, just feel it out. Yeah. I'm just telling you, I got everybody hooked on it in the office. Cool. Gina right there, she's hooked. Gina, you hooked? You like this shit? <laughs> they good. You only can take like a, little, a little piece in it. Little piece. Don't take the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. What you say, you take four? I'm telling you, bro, I'm like a fucking junkie with that shit now. I see why your ass don't be asleep, fam. Huh? That's why you be up two in the morning. No way. That shit puts you to sleep. That shit will have me sleep. Oh, this going to put you to yeah, sleep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah, I might got to try one there. So when you when you get in the studio and you're recording, like, what, 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 where's your mind state at? Because, you know, you, you do sort of more, like, emotional singing mm -hmm. type rap. Like, what, what kind of mind state do you get into when you go in the booth? Shit, I just try to, I really try to, like, have, like, Try to find some type of motivation, like, or some type of, like, feel me? Mm. Just try to get real deep in my thoughts, you feel me? Hell yeah, getting, like, a certain vibe. Or it depends on the vibe, you know? I ain't really, I don't really go in there, like, let me make a pain song, mm. feel me? I go in there, like, really ready for any song, like, any type, you feel me? Yeah. It's just whatever beats I get, uh, that's, how, that's how my vibe gonna be. So if they playing lit beats, I'm gonna be... Feel me? I'll be lit. If it's some down type of pain song, then I'm just going to have me like, I know I got to really sit and think, get on my vibe, you know, roll me a joint, mm. you know? So it's more about the beat than how you yourself feel at that moment? Sometimes. Mm. Like, if I'm like feeling like, feel me? If you feeling down, you ain't going to want to hype beat. Yeah. You're going to want to get in there and just... Let it out, you feel me? Sometimes you you get that. Definitely. You know? Like so if you, you, when you feel like shit, you still get in the studio, you're just going to make different kind of music? I'm going to make I feel like shit type of music. Like, I'm going <laughs> to tell you why I feel like this. Definitely. Or at least I'm going to try. Right. Yeah. 
I'm gonna try to let you know that what I'm trying to do. Like, you feel me? I feel like that that like that make you like that'll have people like more interested in you. You feel me? Yeah. When they really know like what you really going through. You feel me? Right. I feel it. So, what are you planning on right now? You trying to like put out a big album? You gonna keep doing singles? What's the, what's the move right now? Um, we dropped a project not too long ago. Uh, neighborhood poetry. You know, it was like fifty something on Apple Music on mm-hmm. the hip hop charts. You know, um, so we planning on dropping something like towards the end of the year though. Probably somewhere like not too much. Uh. How you said what type of music I make? <laughs> yeah, yeah, not too much like that. More like, uh, you feel me? Right. Yeah, something for probably like the summer. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Different vibes for the Different seasons. Different vibes. If that makes sense. Yeah. Um. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, uh, yeah. Is there anything that you really want to accomplish in this game? Whether it's like artists that you want to work with, mm-hmm. or is there just anything that you really want to make sure you accomplish, like while you're making music? I ain't gonna lie, I'm trying to be like, I'm trying to see how the hell I get like Post Malone and Travis Scott, them boys. <laughs> yeah. Hell yeah. Bill, just That's like my a crazy, goals. I'm trying to be out there with them boys. I'm McDonald's commercials and shit. Mm. Well, hey man, if Saweetie could get one, you could definitely probably get I one. I want saying, though, yeah. but you know, I got to see how we could do this. Yeah. Just keep grinding, you know. Keep building it up. Keep building. I mean, Florida, if you really think about it, over the past five years, mm-hmm. I don't think you could really point at any city that has, or any state that has, like, grown and had more talent coming out of it. Like, you know, mm-hmm. like, like, Florida was kind of, there was always rappers from Florida my whole life, but, there was, you know, there was not, really like, a huge wave you of know, a ton of talent coming from it's crazy because it it's really, like, talent that came out, like, mm-hmm. that, even talent that didn't get the, like, you feel me? But it's real talent in in the city for sure. Yeah, for sure. It's real talent. Definitely. For sure. Were you ever an X fan? Mm, yeah, I was. I ain't gonna lie. Right. I went and like I ain't gonna say I was like, but just him being from the city, you know, like that's major. I don't never like. Like you me? might you might not have necessarily gotten that into it, but you you've got yeah, curious about it. I done listened to a couple of his songs. I'm not gonna say like you yeah. feel me. Some of his songs is like you feel me. But I'm not gonna make it seem like I was just, you know, the biggest X fan. But right. I was, just, I'm a fan for sure. I actually went to school with him in like middle school. For really? Real. Yeah, yeah. You remember him and shit? I remember him for real. What was your impression of him back then? Cause like people were showing me him before, like he blew up. And then you're like, oh I'm fuck, like, I remember that kid. The- when he was fading, nigga, like he whooping niggas in Burger King or something. <laughs> he was like that. You remember him fighting in school? That's shit when, back then? That's the type of shit when people were showing me, like before he even blew up, like. Right. That's when I'm like, oh, this this the dude. Then when he blew up, it's like, damn, like that shit crazy. That would be dope if you were able to sit here and be I like, yeah, I had a fade with him back in the day. Oh no, no that would be a good story. <laughs> Fire, no, <laughs> uh, no. But nah, he was. I ain't gonna lie, he was cool though. Yeah. When I, yeah, when I. I definitely think that you know, even though his career was cut short, that it probably helped inspire a fuckload of kids from Florida yeah, to I try to make lie. something. If he was like, I feel like if he was like. It would have been different in the city for sure. Definitely, it would be different. Yeah, for sure. For sure. He was really like, you feel me? He was really fucking with the city though. That's I could see that when he blew like he was fucking with the city. Though. Yeah, because normally people blow up and they move to fucking California, mm-hmm. or Atlanta, or whatever. He just posted up, yeah. bought a house, and just stayed there. Yeah, mm. that shit be crazy. Uh, he a legend for sure though. Rest in peace, my boy. Um, anybody you want to shout out in particular? Anything we need to know? Um, Shit, uh, Free La Quest, Free La Cooper, you know, 26 Coop, he the next one. Okay. From my side, he right, and right now he locked up, though, you know, free him, feel me, ASAP, you know. Um, uh, yeah, shallow side, baby, you know. <laughs> that way. Shit, uh, yeah, yeah. All right. FCG Heem, appreciate you, man. Appreciate you for having me, man. Nice Hopefully, tapping in. when I come back, you know, big and better. Let's go. I'm yeah, ready, yeah. man. Yeah. Keep going For crazy. Sure. Appreciate, Appreciate you, my you boy. man. Much love. For sure. FCG Heem, No Jumper, coolest podcast in the world. Check us out on YouTube, Patreon, OnlyFans, all yeah, that yeah. shit. <laughs> uh, like, yeah, comment, yeah. subscribe. The patrons on the screen. Appreciate you, man.
Much love. Don't forget about the edibles. No, you you got to take those. You got to <laughs> scarf those down. And if not, make make everybody on your team try them out. Who won't win? Mike, come on. Hey. <laughs> hey. You want to be high or what?